Good evening. Welcome and Merry Christmas. Uh, a few notes before we begin tonight. Um, how many of you have never seen Coin A play live before? Raise your hand. Six of you. Okay, that's awesome. So then I don't have to explain a whole bunch, but to, to, to those of you who are new, hi, I'm Brian. Um, there's a, I have some friends back here too. They'll come out in a minute. Um, tonight's presentation is uh, a Christmas presentation telling the story of uh, why Christmas is so important and then all of the events um, that led up to the, the birth of Jesus. The songs that you're going to hear, many of them are going to be familiar, and you are always welcome to sing along if you are comfortable. You do not need to by any means, but, uh, but yes, you are invited to sing along with us whenever you want. Um, we are going to be collecting an offering this evening. Uh, before I get to that, I want to say first of all, thank you to Kettle Moraine Lutheran High School for uh, hosting this. Would you join me in thanking Kettle Moraine? They are always so gracious to us, and we truly appreciate their support, uh, and they just have such a wonderful facility here. So, um, This program this evening uh, is not being funded by anybody, and we didn't charge you any tickets and all of that, and uh, that's, that's our little Christmas present to you. If you would like to be a blessing to Koine Music Ministries as a result of this, we are going to be collecting an offering during the singing of Where Shepherds Lately Knelt. Oh, that's in about an hour from now, so... Um, if you uh, are unable to do cash or check and you do want to do credit cards, we can take that afterwards as well. Uh, we have that capability. We'll have CDs and t-shirts uh, for you as well, and I will see you back there if you'd like. So, um, so it'll, be, it'll be done during Where Shepherds Lately Knelt. Uh, I have a couple of gentlemen who are going to help us with that ushering part. Um, so, any questions? Well, good, because I don't really know what I would say. Uh, again, a huge thank you for being here. I know it's a very busy time. We know that it's a very busy time of year, and uh, you're here to celebrate the birth of your Savior with us, and that truly means the world. So thank you so much. Uh, enjoy Emmanuel Lux. Good evening. Testing, testing, ah, there we go. Oh, pardon me, I'm sorry, you can't see me, but I'm right here. Oh, don't look so surprised, you actually know who I am. In fact, I've been around for a very long time, from almost the beginning, in fact. Maybe you have seen me like this. <laughs> or this. Observe me here. Listen to me on one of these. Was or maybe you saw someone talking about me through something like this. Yes, I've been around for a long time. And these days, I come to you in my newest form, faster than I have ever moved before. Who am I? I am the gospel. And with the help of some friends, I'm going to reveal to you a mystery revealed in a very common place about some very common people, but it's so extraordinary that it has to be told. 2,000 years ago, a family was left with nowhere to stay. A soon-to-be mother, pregnant without a suitable place to deliver her child, a husband unable to provide shelter for his family. Nothing real extraordinary about it all, except one thing. Attached to this scene was a word, Emmanuel, God with us. I remember the very moment this word was first promised. I was there. It's when I was spoken for the first time. It was to another mother, not pregnant, but promised one day to be. See, she had lost something, everything. 
And the only way she was told that it would be given back was a son, Emmanuel. Now, her son is not whom we are talking about. In fact, the promise was about a future son, the son of this family. A very special and unique boy who was like you in every way, whose skin felt hot and cold, whose heart felt joy and loss, whose body could grow tired with labor and yet, at the same time, he was God himself. But perhaps the most amazing and extraordinary thing about this child is that he was tempted, like you. When he saw money, he was pressed to greed. When he saw beautiful women, he was whispered to want. When he saw human pain and suffering, he was challenged to ignore. Anything that squeezes, constricts, or pulls at you, he felt. And this is the extraordinary thing. Because he was like you, you can go to him, and he will understand. This mystery of this boy, this common family, this common scene, is revealed by the word. Emmanuel. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful Word. After He had provided purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the Majesty in Heaven. So He became as much superior to the angels as the name He has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father? Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him.
sounds of Christmas echo divine. God the Son, perfect in every way, brought to his people after years of longing. The eternal, everlasting God made flesh. But what may be perceived precious on the outside glosses over what was really happening. All the weight, tension, pressure, and constricting pull of the chains of slavery were placed upon Jesus' skin. The Son of God became man to be put under the burden and weight of the law to free those who were slaves to it. But the scripture declares that the whole world is a prisoner of sin, that we are held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. So the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. When the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons.
Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. Oh, come, O oh, key of David, come and open wide our heavenly door. Make safe the way that leads on high and close the path to misery. Joe!